Elden Let's Ring take a look at it. Call. Now, no, I hope that there's no spoilers of, of the DLC. I haven't finished it yet. Time in the video. But Elden Ring does something incredibly unique, something very special, something that the rest of the upper echelon of the video oh. game industry just can't seem to replicate. And that's come out with a holistic, high-quality title that delivers on the player's expectations for under $70, not once, but twice. Elden Ring isn't just a great game. It's a case study on what games should oh, be. Okay, he's talking about the DLC. Be. The and quality that's exactly of what it. We're going to talk about. To be fair, after Elden Ring, the game that I could say that capped this, you know, like the quality, the level, the quality and everything. I wouldn't say a level better than Elden Ring because Elden Ring and Baldur's Gate, that's the game that I'm talking about, they are both like completely different genres. You can even you cannot even compare them. But game-wise, I prefer still I'm not going to lie, Baldur's Gate, I spent 700 hours on that game. It's insane how many hours I spent on that game, seriously. I even stopped recording and everything to basically post. Elden Ring basically gave me more creativity and actually made me more of a challenger than anything. After Elden Ring, I started basically doing challenges for any type of other game. So it basically gave me the drive to do new things. And I'm gonna say Elden Ring is still on my top three Elden Ring's favorite games Shadow of, the Earth of all hit time. A so current player count of this over game is seven hundred and eighty thousand players. I want to point out just how absurd it is that this is a DLC expansion that's widely a single player game Man. that not only hit that wait, high wait, wait. of a concurrent player count, hours. But that's over eighty percent retention from the game's peak of its initial release, which was nine hundred and fifty thousand players. Now, to add to this absurdity, the official Elden Ring Twitter account posted an image announcing over 5 million Tarnish have Jesus entered Christ. into the realm. Yeah, I saw this one as well. Why is my thing lagging like this? But yeah, I saw this one as well. Like, and I think they literally said this. Um, I don't know if it was like 24 hours of the... Yeah, I don't know if it was 24 hours or like two days after they basically posted this. Which indicates that they got like five million tarnished shadows. We aren't even like mentioning that record to time, Steam, at the time of this like, recording, amazing. only forty percent of players have defeated Moog to be even able to gain entrance into the DLC. With now both Elden Ring to and be its fair, DLC when I saw that, I think it was way Steam less than that. It was less than the same for each platform the game is now available on. It's safe to say that Elden Ring is a massive achievement, one that's not only worth a... Sorry for actually pausing that. I want to see what is the second one. Steam Deck. Okay, Steam Deck is the second one. Yeah, makes sense. So you're telling me that the It's safe Elden to say Ring. that Elden Ring is a massive achievement, okay. one that's not only makes worth sense, appreciation, sense. but study. However, it is of my firm belief that the games industry leaders have no intention... I still don't have that sort. ...because emulating the success of FromSoft and Miyazaki I do need to get it, though. Humility, talent, and vision, all things seemingly bankrupt from many of today's modern games. Something that I think is really well represented when we start to look back at the most influential games over the past couple of years, Elden Ring and Baldur's Gate 3, where when we compare these two, they become eerily similar. You see a direct thread yep, of unaccountable two, one of my, my top three distancing games. themselves from products that they know that they can't make themselves. Hell, on Baldur's Gate, they basically said that, hey, don't compare us to basically the the game developers. They came out, out of the woodworks. It's actually funny because Baldur's Gate and Elden Ring, they basically get, they got different uh, approaches, right? On Elden Ring, when it came out, people were saying that this game is not that good. And they basically said the reasons why and everything just to basically, you know, Elden Ring is here and they were trying to push it down back down here pretty much. And uh, Baldur's Gate, what they did is basically see this is a wonderful game, but don't compare us to this wonderful game because we don't have the budget to basically compete with the other studios. Baldur's Gate actually got the praise, but the people were saying that, hey, don't compare us to them because we cannot stand on that pedestal. While Elden Ring, they basically just dragged it down completely. Like, they say that this is not that good of a game. Like, I don't know why you guys are basically hyping it up. If you don't but remember, it is, though. AAA developers from Baldur's Gate, they just had Gorilla a different games, approach. Maybe that Elden they got heat. For getting a 97 on Metacritic and how it means that reviewers don't care about 
Games UI, another developer unimpressed yeah. with the graphic stability and performance, and another one. Yeah, they were literally just blaming Elden Ring for no now, reason. In the case of Baldur's Gate the 3, we had developers ways. take a different approach. They used their imagination, yeah. <laughs> realizing that they can't make players believe that well, something they enjoy is actually bad. Exactly. They tried to distance themselves before the release of Baldur's Gate 3, painting the game as an incredibly unique set of circumstances, unable yeah. to be repeated, and an unfair standard for future games to be compared to. Calling the game Rockstar level. They said that the game is actually scope. good and Same everything. Well, they didn't even give them that praise. But. To use. And my personal favorite from the Diablo 4 senior designer, Chris Balzer, saying, But people too often look at the fruits of labor and not the labor itself. Same as it ever was, I guess. Same deal with people wondering why there are so few artists painting like Renaissance masters. Yes, we will pay attention to the final product and your work, pretty much, because. Guess what? The final product does influence on your work. Sorry to say this, but if you spend five years to make a toothpaste game, I'm sorry. I don't give a damn what was your work before because clearly it wasn't enough <laughs> or you was basically trolling. So, no, I do not care about your work ethics or whatever the heck. If the final product is absolutely toothpaste. Now, if you're basically providing me Baldur's Gate quality or Elden Ring, I'm not asking f to to the, to that mf degree, okay? Maybe I am, but if you actually get there, I would like to know the process and everything that you actually been through or whatever the heck. Because, brother, if these guys were able to do the same amount of hours that you guys basically have, or even less, and basically can come out. With this level of work, and you're just asking me to basically congratulate you for your actual effort. Like, what are we talking about? It's like uh, the same thing that we are now giving trophies for participation. I hate that. Why are we giving trophies for participation? There, that basically just inclines people to just do worse. Oh yeah. Yes, Chris. We are wondering where the That's Renaissance Masters were when you released <laughs> no, Diablo joking. 4, a 20 year old franchise at this point that remained in turmoil for the better part of a year. Please, tell Diablo, me more okay. about how much time and experience matter when it comes to developing great games. By this measure, Ubisoft's open-world games should be untouchable masterpieces by now with how many games that they've been making. The controversies surrounding both games prove a yeah. lack of vision and accountability. Jealous developers knowing that how many games that this guy made, games there's the way no that way been talking he about should even say that. Gate 3, but the Biggest value that we received as players from this conversation was the transparent realization that these studios and developers genuinely do not understand the wants and needs of players the same as our newfound kings in FromSoft and Larian. You know, it's crazy. When you start to look back at some of these older conversations, you realize why the games industry is in the position it's in today. And you look at all these developers that are caught in the trap of thinking about things like high fidelity graphics and huge scope and overbloated UIs when all of those things are serving to do is increase their budgets and bleed their profits. No wonder these guys have low high expectations fidelity graphics. for future I have no projections idea what that even of the is. industry. Huh, I wonder where that's coming from. The funny thing is, is that none of those things have anything to do with the reason why Baldur's Gate 3 or Elden Ring were successful games. Five seconds of scrolling social media is going to show you why players like those games. And it's pretty simple. They're just good games. They're enjoyable. In Baldur's Gate 3's case, it was just the ability to genuinely have real choice in a video game. That is that is true. Like, I don't think they actually... It's like they are aware and also not aware at the same time. The company is big, right? So they have different uh, heads in terms of, like, uh, knowledge base. So... There's people that know what can make a good game, but they don't have the decision at the end of the at the end of the day, right? But obviously the head of the freaking company does have the freaking saying, but I'm pretty sure that the head of the company doesn't even play games. But there's a a gaming company that that one of the CEOs or the CEO actually do play the games that he basically puts out or other other video games as well. In this particular situation, I do understand. Well, I don't understand actually because these guys are actually making excuses for everything that they do. Like in Elden Ring, it's that just that a that damn is just game. excuse city and right there. These opinions that these guys throw out there just go to show that they're not playing these games. Yeah. They're not playing these games with the eye of a player. They're playing it with the eye of somebody that's making their own game and. 
you need to change none of them play none of them play boulders get or elden ring and is as incredible as elden ring well you have unyielding vision on what you believe players want to play what you yourself want to play and miyazaki reveals that to us now in a recent newsletter from The Guardian, Miyazaki gives his thoughts on game design and the current state of the video huh? game industry. The Guardian huh, writes, what? The famously challenging dark fantasy epic Elden Ring was the world's second best-selling game in 2022, and the release of its expansion, Shadow of the Erd Tree, last Friday. Second best-sold game, the first... Uh, at that time, it, was it God of War that came out at that time? I, I'm trying to figure out which game... Was it because Bowler's Gate came out in 2023? Once again, as everyone arguing last year. about so, whether what it's other too game? Difficult. I think it was God of War. Every, but in preparation for Shadow of the Earth Tree, I played through the main story of Elden Ring. I want to preface this by saying okay. I absolutely suck at video games. So my approach or play style is to use everything at my disposal, all the assistance, every scrap of aid that the game offers, and also all the knowledge I have as an architect of <laughs> Why the game. Why wouldn't you? Everybody should do that. Open world nature Unless you're trying to put challenges on yourself. The barrier so then. Of entry, and I might be the one who's benefiting the most from that as a player more than anyone else. Man, I love this interview. And I think it highlights something seemingly lost in games today. How many times have you asked yourself or thought to yourself whether or not the developers actually play the games that they make? FromSoft makes challenging games. However, Miyazaki wouldn't put the player through something if he hadn't experienced it. Majority of them, himself. none. To make sure oh, the mobile game companies, they, none of them play their, their games. Sure, they could earn this set of armor by killing this unique NPC after a hidden quest line, but I think they'd rather buy it. You know, I would actually bet good money that the... Imagine if... Elden Ring had microtransactions. Hell, Baldur's Gate as well. Baldur's Gate, I would actually understand if they they put microtransactions. Elden Ring, I would just, I would be actually absolutely shocked. In Baldur's Gate, like me saying I understand, that doesn't mean that I basically vouch for it, okay? Uh, obviously, if you do put microtransactions on anything, that would be scummy. But at the same time, me, the person that been playing mobile games for a long time and also i hate it at this point but let's not talk about the mobile game that i have on my phone microtransactions is always welcome to people that just want to wear a lot of game because some people they just want reasons to spend their money they don't even care where they're spending on it so especially these type of games Baldur's gate and elden ring Brother, if they basically can come up with a microtransaction in those games, the vast majority of some of the best quality of life features that we've yeah. seen in games likely came from billions playing of their billions. games through the eyes of a player extensively, exhaustingly even. And I realize that quality of life isn't necessarily the flashiest of video game design philosophies, but at the end of the day, it has an immeasurable effect on a player's experience while playing a game. Seriously, it's immeasurable. The vast majority of players aren't even going to notice when a quality of life feature isn't in place. Sometimes they'll call it out. They'll see another game that has something and point to the game they're playing and say, hey, why isn't that here? But more times than not, they're just going to have this general feeling of unease and frustration because the game... To be fair, whenever they basically have these type of questions, like for me, for example, if I do have these type of questions, why isn't this in this game that I'm playing? Is if this the game that I'm playing is literally like a carbon copy of that game or has the same premise of the game. Let's say Dark Souls-like games, right? That is like a genre. Dark Souls-like games have certain features to it that it will make me compare to other Dark Souls-like games. It is sometimes fair for me to compare games because some developers just hate to do the comparison thing. But if you're in a specific genre, I have to compare you to that genre. You can take my comparison positively or negatively because nobody would like to be compared to something that is better than them, right? <laughs> nobody likes that comparison. But if you're making a product for everybody, I'm sorry, but we got to compare you to somebody that is actually doing something right. FromSoft has its own way of hedging risks, so to speak, in that most of our projects have a partner who's financing the project. From a business management perspective, we're not betting everything on one single project. At the same time, you have to find the right project to allow for failure, whether it's smaller in scope or scale or a small module of something bigger. There has to be room for that. I think that's where a lot of young game developers will be challenged and will be able to learn from it. 
making sure you understand and identify where those pockets Gee. of failure can be allowed. Let me guess. He got a lot of heat from this, right? <laughs> because he did mention every single other video game creator indirect well uh, very much directly to be honest <laughs> indirectly through specific ones but clearly directly to everybody that basically talked about Elden Ring in, in general fire shots in quotations perhaps we can say that quotation marks firing shots bang bang but how we try to grow he's our not talent. wrong though <laughs> he's Miyazaki not even views a elden ring as a turning wrong. point for from software before and after elden ring there is going to be a but these people difference. don't want to hear you you, you talk see like that, that in 2023's mech game armored core 6 i would say he hopes that we will soon be seeing from other game directors at the company not just himself where fromsoft is right now in terms of scale i would say Ooh. elden ring is really the limit We've tapped every resource and talent we have access to, scaling it even bigger. Huh? I have my concerns. Perhaps having multiple projects is the next stage, where some of the other young talent can have the opportunity to manage and direct game design for a smaller project. Man, what I love about Miyazaki's perspective here is that it goes directly against the plans and perspective of most of Don't the AAA industry's Elden Ring. leaders. If we take time to look around the industry Ooh. and look at different games that are being developed right now, we can easily point out ones and say, so what happens if that game fails? Dragon Age and EA as an example, a game that's been in development for 10 years now, going through multiple iterations, redesigns, and identity changes, something that isn't a surefire hit anymore as they've chose to reimagine what a Dragon Age game is, vaulting strategic combat and the darker themes the games used to have. So this game has been around for 10 years. And is it? It's not an online game as I can... S well, I absolutely don't know, but... Trying to eye what a more modern game? audience, obviously. A dangerous it has sample, to say the least, with the games that were last released by the studio were Mass Effect, Andromeda, and Anthem. Okay. When the games industry seeks to scale itself infinitely, no wonder you have industry layoffs in mass. PlayStation, Spider-Man well, 2 is another example. $300 million to make, tripling the budget of Spider-Man 2018, only to sell the game to the same amount of players. The game's profits are now getting closer to the black oh, than in the green. With all of this infinite scaling for fidelity, scope, and design, these bobblehead CEOs scale their projects and their projections the same as the game, and it's just not realistic. Knowing your limit before you reach it is an incredible act of humility on the part of FromSoft and Miyazaki. EA, Activision, Ubisoft, you know for a fact that if they had a game that was as successful as Elden Ring, they would be rushing to make the next version of it. Make it bigger, spend more, and expect better yes it's like a call of duty syndrome hey if the first one works if the first one basically gain a lot of attraction well it's common sense to basically just recreate the same uh successful project right why wouldn't you if it's successful we will do it now if everybody stops buying iphone i'm pretty sure they will just basically pivot to something else even though they have a bunch of i results i products you know so but that's just not how games matter. work but and yes, i think it's something that's rarely recognized in games today if we look around the industry and we see all the different iterations on a lot of these titles the first the fourth the fifth or the 50th when it comes to call of duty it's a crapshoot whether or not you're going to be able to retain but the yeah, audience that you've already had for gaming, find more find a new audience or even retain most of the players that you had previously and you can't keep pouring money into something thinking that you're going to get the same or better results that's a major gamble and that's what's Really beautiful about the words of Miyazaki is that he says we don't I'm bet amazed that Call of on Duty, one though. single game, one single project, nor should you. And I think a lot of studios that are out there... How's Call of Duty doing so good, though? Like, I don't understand. I don't see any reason to deny another interpretation or adaptation of Elden Ring, a movie, What do you mean by example, that? He told me. But what does he mean by that, I don't think myself though? or from software have the knowledge okay. or ability to produce something in a different medium. So that's where a very strong partner would have to come into play. We have to build a lot of trust and agreement on whatever it is we're trying to achieve. This is the moment that I wish I had money. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. I would have bought the licensing. I would have tried to... My guys, do you know how amazing would it be to basically make a film? Not a film. I actually would like to see a series like a Netflix show or maybe not Netflix, but... Whatever it is, but a, just a series of a tarnish, but not in live action, though. I want this actually animated, not live action, animated. This would be amazing. This would remind me of 
What what is that other show? Castlevania? It's not Castlevania, but let's say with the same graphics as Castlevania because they do have pretty good graphics and animation in, in general. Not graphics, animation. What am I talking about graphics for? <laughs> That's not a game. Uh, but animation wise, it is pretty nice. So let's say if they basically make Elden Ring as a depiction like a Castlevania style, we may not follow the the life of the Tarnish because I don't actually know who's the main character in this freaking show. You are not even the main character of your own show, to be honest. But we can basically it could it could happen, and I'm pretty sure it will go crazy. But there's interest for sure. It would 100% go crazy. Now, while I love the I idea I already want to want to freaking buy the show. TV show or movie. I think <laughs> the only I'm, one that's capable I don't have of the money to buy a freaking Peter show. Jackson. I mean, basically, you're going to need something Elden Ring level to be able to compete with Elden Ring. My real takeaway huh? is Miyazaki saying, "We are done." And FromSoft deserves to say that. Yeah. Near the beginning of this video, I brought up how it requires unyielding vision Sadly, to yes. make a game as great as Elden Ring. And that relentless vision and identity of who and what From Software is as a studio and what games they aim I mean, to make poked. is the real wake-up call for this industry. I want you to keep in mind that players and reviewers lamented about the game's difficulty at launch and even now again with the DLC. Just recently, Bandai Namco responded to the players telling them to just go level up their Skidoo blessings. While sure there's going to be some day one balancing or performance issues, FromSoft doesn't run around trying to save face. They Wait, just Bandai Namco said that? The game time to breathe. <laughs> Players you guys are love trash. the feel of playing Says a FromSoft game hasn't because beat the they don't resort yet. to the now standardized practices of hand-holding that much of the industry relies on. They are going to lead you through the game. By the way, I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about myself From because Soft's I'm also at a dragon that I can't beat. You, as a player, beat. will play the well, game and they trust that you times. are going to have the ability to find solutions to challenges and use the tools provided on your own. There's something to be said about having faith in the players. I've said this in the past or in previous videos, but leadership is really what's lacking in most of the game's industry. When I look at a game... To be fair, is it faith? Do we call that faith in the players? I just feel like... Obviously, there is people that test the game in, like from day one until they actually beat it. Because there is no way anybody will release a game <laughs> where none of the creators or any tester play the full game without even beating it. So... If the game can be beaten, brother, I'm going to be honest with you. You just suck. <laughs> what do you want me to say? Like the Elden game can Ring. be beaten? When I play okay. a game like Elden Ring, that's all, I, can that's feel all I need to know to play the game. For the audience. I can feel like I'm playing a game that's made for me. And that's a rare feeling outside of a few select releases and in indie games today. Why is it so rare? Because the vast majority of the industry doesn't have the to be fair i don't feel like elden ring was made for being me. people that worked as directors I, or developers of their games i, I can't even there say it. i just like it man. i just like it because it's the hiring. first game that i ever as the played the video game like industry this. begins to fuse with the entertainment and tech industry placing all these different marketing minds and career Ooh. ceos into these positions that actually can of break stances there is a unique insight that's lost I that only no comes idea. while working in the trenches that customers aren't just customers they're players you're not selling a product you're selling an experience. Experiences have identities. They can't be made for everyone. And you have to be okay with serving a target audience and not trying to grow your audience infinitely. It is actually an experience. More games today that are is actually for the true. lack of identity. More leadership is questioning how you're to make more money. You're selling actually a service, actually. To appeal to a wider well, audience. Well, you're selling both. <laughs> However, some of that does come down to knowing that you're going to end up turning off a wider audience and you have to be okay with that you have to be able to prepare for yourself and be able to pre prepare your company for those kind of things and that's one of the things that he brings up where he's talking about how they you know prepare themselves for failure because they don't know if things are going to work but they know who they're trying to make that game for and that's the most important thing hell divers 2 ceo had said it best before a game for everyone is a game for no one and i think that Elden Ring proves that there is a wide audience, a massive audience for... Maybe that's actually why, well, it is 100% why that Elden Ring has way more people now are they saying that the game is too hard, mostly because it apparently is so good to the audience that basically is catering to, catering to that people, it's seeping in Elden Ring, Dark Souls-like games because they are, it's getting so much attraction that even though the game was not made for the rest of you guys, they are coming in. Because Elden Ring, I would say it wasn't made for me. And I enjoyed the crap out of it, clearly. <laughs> Just look at my channel. It wasn't a game made for me, but I came into 
the circle because of the uproar. I'm not even going to say it was the uproar because I think I was like, well, how can I say this? Like I was, I was playing the game the, the moment that it released, I believe. I think I played Elden Ring the moment that it released. So it didn't have this much fame at the time. I also don't know what came over me to play this game. I really don't know. But that's why it's basically getting a lot of attraction in negatively, negative, negatively, sorry, English, that because of the other people that are basically sipping in to Elden Ring, because most of the other people, they probably have never played uh, from soft that company's name. They basically get defeated a bunch of times and they didn't know. And they it's the, the first time that they experienced that. And also stop watching YouTube's. Uh, YouTube's stop watching YouTube videos about Elden Ring because all of these guys are playing Elden Ring their own way aka they're not using summonings they're not using other weapons that basically are broken they're not basically using certain weapons that basically will make their lives easier or uh, bows arrows or exploits they're probably using only one weapon because they like it and they're not using any armor because they don't like it or whatever the heck so they make that a challenge for them but they probably don't know that it's a challenge they just basically like to play the game like that but it's also a challenge and people normally see that and they think that oh i should play the game like that no what are you high <laughs> that is not how you should well you play the game however you want okay this it's not about this is how you play it. this is how you're not supposed to play it. you play the game how you want to enjoy it as much as possible it's just that when you see other youtubers basically saying that oh i play without summonings because playing without summonings is the way to go and if you do summon you are a loser you are weak it doesn't matter play the game how you want maybe i'm saying that because i also play with summons but at the same time let me solo her also plays with freaking identity, summons okay now let are, me now let me get this thing out of my chest a little bit more accessible it has to have an identity and Elden Ring does. From Software does. And I feel like that's probably the biggest wake-up call of all. Is that the vast majority of the industry just doesn't seem to have much of an identity anymore. I don't know who they're making games for. They're making games for everybody, but not everybody's going to play these games. For Damn, he's actually getting like quite there. a lot of attraction for this. Now, I guess it's time for me to go back on Elden Ring. Well, this was fun.